Hi, I'm Sam, and this video is to show you how to use SharePoint as a Dropbox of sorts. Somebody in my firm came to me with a problem. Um, they wanted to allow users to add files and folders to a particular location where they could see those files and folders, but they wouldn't be able to see other people's files and folders that they added themselves. Now, you can do this kind of thing by amending permissions. Um, but it's not particularly easy to do uh, with SharePoint, especially on the fly as files and folders are being added. Typically it has a top-down uh, permissions uh, approach and doesn't allow a permission type, which is um, you know, list and read your own uh, uh, files and folders that you've added. SharePoint Lists has a, an option which is similar to this, where you can see the items that you've created only. You can set that uh, configuration on, on lists, and lists do allow you to have attachments, but they're limited in the types of attachments that you can have. They're limited to 125 meg in total for each list item, um, and you, you can't maintain a folder structure like you would be able to in a document library. So it's a real conundrum. How do you fix that? The first way I thought about fixing this was uh, some kind of power automate flow to amend the permissions, break the uh, propagation inheritance of, of those um, permissions to uh, each of the files and folders. But the difficulty with that is um, you're limited in what you can do there. Um, there's some uh, performance recommendations that you only do this for a certain amount of document files or files and folders in the document library. Um, and it wasn't. It was unsure about how wide this thing could uh, could go. Uh, uh, you know, longer term. The the other way I looked at this, I spoke to a colleague, Grant, who um, pointed me out to the enable file requests feature. So this is more of an externally facing capability, which allows anonymous users essentially to put files and folders into. Uh, a SharePoint or OneDrive directory, but it's very much geared for that external uh, configuration and it requires you to have things like anyone links enabled, which in some organizations, you might not have that configured as it's a tenant level setting, I believe. So the way I've looked at resolving this uh, and this demo will show is having a source document library and a target document library. And what happens is the user who has add and read permissions to the Dropbox um, document library, they add their files and folders there and a Power Automate is triggered. That Power Automate will, will take uh, those files and folders and move them over to the target document library, which only the administrators can access. And then it will go and clean up the source document uh, library and it will clean out all of the files and folders there. Anything it has moved over, it will maintain that folder list as well, which is quite useful because sometimes you get context from that, right? These days, it's more about tagging of files and things like that. But actually, in lots of circumstances, having that folder structure is really, really important. So that's one thing I wanted to make sure it includes. So yep, yeah, I'm going to switch over to a demo now. Um, you'll be able to see and download a copy of the Power Automate um, zip file uh, that you can import to, into your own environment. Um, if you've got any questions, comments, any suggestions, maybe to make it slightly better, feel free to let me know. So this video is just showing you how to use the move files power to make flow to uh, allow a SharePoint Dropbox um, place that people can add files to and they get moved to a protected area automatically. Um, so first thing to do is if you go to make.powerautomate.com, go to uh, import package legacy. <coughs> It'll ask you to uh, find the file so you can click uh, upload. So uh, I'm just going to find the file on my other screen here quickly. Click OK. And it will say it's uploading. Once it's finished uploading, it'll give you a couple of options. You can uh, change the name of the uh, file by clicking the little spanner here. If you want to uh, change the name of the flow, I should say. And then you've got to create uh, or select a connection. So I can click the spanner here. Um, I've got a connection for SharePoint. If you don't, you can click Create New, which will open a new tab. And then you can authenticate a connection for SharePoint. And then come back to this page and refresh this list. I'm just going to click on this and click Save. And then click Import, which will import the flow. Now that's uh, imported correctly, I can go to this thing to open the flow here. What I'll just do quickly is just show you uh, the SharePoint site that I've got created. I've got the SharePoint site with a document uh, 
uh, library called protected documents that an admin can only access and then a document library called document dropbox which is designed for any user to be able to add documents to but not have any edit or, or delete permissions to that so let's go back to flows and click on open flow and this will take us to the editor screen for the flow which i'll show you how um, how it all works Okay, this has opened up. So essentially the trigger for the Power Automate flow is when a file is created in the source in that document Dropbox um, library. Um, now this gets triggered on files or folders. So um, that's something to be aware of. The, the name is rather misleading. Um, I think it suggests that it's just files, but it's files and folders. This is good for our um, use case here because we want to maintain the folder directory in the target location. So when you uh, add this, what you'll need to do is you need to come to site address um, here and um, once you've got your connections set up correctly, this will probably come up with an error for you. You'll need to click this drop down box, pick the site, uh, the SharePoint site and then pick the library name for the source location. After that, you'll need to update these four variables here. So this first one is the, the SharePoint site URL. Essentially, I could pick that from this um, action somehow by doing some uh, index of uh, function or something like that. But for now, we're just setting it as a variable. Uh, the site name path, so essentially the last part of that URL. Uh, the source docu library name, so uh, do document Dropbox, and then the target one protected document. So once you've updated all those items here, the rest of the flow will be automatically updated. You don't have to change any of the other actions there. Um, so what, how does this work? Essentially what we're saying is, is the trigger initially an item, a file or a folder? So if it's a folder, uh, true, then go over to this left hand side. We'll come back to the folders in a minute. And then what we do is we check whether the, uh, a folder exists where the, the file um, resides in the source, direct, uh, source document library. Does that folder exist in the um, target library? And what I'm using here, if you try to run this command, which is the list uh, folders um, action, if it doesn't exist, it will come back as a failed and a 404. So we're using configure run after, um, which to change these branch branches. So this branch will happen, will take place if this uh, action fails, uh, and this one will take place if it's successful. Successful there. So what we're saying is, um, if the folder doesn't exist, we're going to create the folder for the file to sit inside. This doesn't have to be done at every level. So if a folder is four deep, it will create the folder and then the preceding ones as well, which is quite useful. And after it's created the folder, it will copy the file to target and then it will delete the file from the source uh, document library. What we also have is this last one, which is uh, marking the job has succeeded. The trouble is because this step has failed here, if we don't put this action at the end, it will look like the, the job is actually, the flow has actually failed when actually it's been successful. We're just using that as a condition essentially. If the folder does exist, what I need to do first of all is check that it, if it's the root folder or not, if there's a files at the root folder of the document library. And if they are, then we're just saying the destination folder is the doc library name. And if not, Essentially, what we need to do is we need to get the cut out just the the folders um, the the folders from the source path. Um, after either one of those is done, we'll delete the file from the source and the set, and uh, uh, marking the job has succeeded. So that's all the files part of it. If it's a folder, we're doing this do loop, and you might have noticed there's a, a variable up here which is a boolean for is folder empty. So what we're saying is do this loop until folder empty variable is equal to true. So to get that information, we are using the get files uh, action from SharePoint and looking at the um, uh, source document library. And we're basically seeing that, is there any files in this folder? And if there are files in this folder, um, so we're saying length equals to zero, which means there's no files. If there's no files, we're setting the variable to true, which will break us out of this uh, loop on the next uh, execution. It will delete the SharePoint folder. So we're using the HTTP action from SharePoint to do that because there's no out of the box delete folder action. But if there are files in there, then we're just delaying for 20 seconds. So that will make sure that um, you know we're not 
thrashing uh, this flow over and over again. Um, what you can also do is uh, you've got limits for uh, uh, loops, so this would go around 10 times. You can change that uh, based on your use case, or you can increase this uh, delay uh, for, for you as well. So that's how the flow works. What we can do is we can come out of here. When you import flows, they're automatically disabled. So we're going to click Turn On, and then we're going to go into SharePoint and go to Document Dropbox. Um, and then I've got a, um, a folder which has got some slight, um, it's got some slight hierarchy. So you can see here, it's a folder called blank. It's got a document at the root. It's got folder one, it's got document in. It's got folder two, it's got three documents in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this onto my other screen. I'm gonna select and hold and drag and drop these files into document Dropbox. Okay, so it's um, copied all those. We can go back to our flow now. Um, and just want to refresh the screen because it still seems to think it's disabled. Okay, so the trigger um, it says when a file is created, um, it checks every three minutes, so it can take a couple of minutes to. to kick this off and this is actually taking place quite quickly so we can see that's running now we can click refresh a couple of times and what we'll see here is the files copy across pretty quickly and these items here are likely the folders because we're basically iterating around to make sure the files have gone first there's one last thing to complete so just refresh this once or twice And it succeeded, so we've all succeeded. Let's go back to SharePoint and see what it looks like. Okay, so document Dropbox, there's nothing here. It's all been removed, which is quite cool. I'm just going to refresh this just to make 100% sure that they've all gone. Yep, they've all gone. We're going to protected documents. Then we'll see everything's moved across and it's maintained that folder structure which I showed you before. So there you have it. There's a really useful way of making a Dropbox that people can add files to and they get moved into a protected um, storage location. So people can add files to uh, an area where they can't read uh, any files added by anybody else. Bit of a workaround, the way that SharePoint permissions works, but hopefully uh, it comes in useful for you. Thanks.